My name's John Mitchinson, I'm the publisher of Unbound, and I'm sitting here high above London with Charles Fernyhoe. He's here to talk about an extraordinary new novel. A Box of Birds is a literary thriller about a philosophical question. How do we make sense of ourselves? Are we bundles of nerve cells, systems of brain mechanisms that have no centre, no self, that give us no free will? Or are we characters in a drama we construct, a story we tell ourselves about ourselves? So it's about a young neuroscientist, Yvonne, and her relationships with two of her students. There's James, who's a dangerously attractive anti-science campaigner, who tries to persuade her that her neuroscientific way of understanding the mind is mistaken. And there's Gareth, who's a brilliant, unstable computer whiz, who's obsessed with the biochemical nature of memory. He tries to convince her to get involved in a scheme to stimulate memory artificially, and that sets off a chain of events involving unscrupulous biotechs, stolen brain mapping data, and a cult of weird storytellers. So the novel's basically asking the question, how should you live if you believe that you're just a massively interconnected bundle of neurons, a system of connections? What's interesting to me is what neuroscience does to our understanding of ourselves. Does it change the way we feel about ourselves? Does it change the way we understand our own emotions, our own thoughts? Crucially, does it change the way that we behave? So what I thought, what the, the idea that came to me was um, to start the story with a neuroscientist who had read the neuroscience and who saw her own brain as working in a particular way, which, which is a collection of different separate systems that have evolved for different purposes that are all pulling in different directions. A fractionated self, if you like, with lots of different brain processes creating a constellation of mental capacities which don't really have a centre, don't really have a self. We do struggle with consciousness you know, in, in neuroscience but in every other field of endeavour as well. You know, consciousness is a tricky one. The but hard it, problem. It's the hard problem, yeah. The, this is what philosophers call the hard problem. The idea that somehow a material system can come to have a subjectivity, can come to have, um, f have consciousness, have um, some centre to its experience. How on earth does that happen? And that's what, that's what we struggle with as philosophers, as neuroscientists. And without giving too much of the game away, um, Yvonne does change a lot through the, through the course of the book. She definitely does. She goes on a journey and she discovers who she is as a person. You know, she starts by doubting herself and ends up um, believing in herself. I would like to feel that it's a book that really engages with science and a new understanding of ourselves. What I haven't done, which I, what I never wanted to do, was just cram the thing full of neuroscience. That's not how it reads. No, there's not actually much theory in there, is there it? isn't. There's not a lot of neuroscientific detail. It's more about that philosophy. It's more about the way doing neuroscience and thinking about neuroscience might make you start to th think differently about yourself and how that then pans out when stuff starts to happen, when a narrative develops. So that's what I was much more interested in and I think I, I would not claim for a moment that I'd invented a new way of writing fiction but I think it feels different to some other stuff. I don't see many other books engaging, many other fiction works engaging with neuroscience in quite the same way. There aren't that many writers who are taking these ideas on. And when they are, I feel they're, they're missing their opportunities. They're not going far enough with saying, how would a materialist feel? How would somebody who's steeped in that philosophy feel and act when stuff starts to happen, when things start to change?